Hi Spring fans, welcome to another super micro edition of Spring Tips in which we're going to look at one or two compelling new features in Spring Boot 2.2 M1. Now of course Spring Boot 2.2 uh, is not yet GA, but it's, uh, it's certainly down the pike. Uh, you know, and uh, you can try it out already on the Spring Initializer. The much renewed, much revamped start.spring.io experience, which I have here open in the browser. Uh, we're going to build a application that highlights some of the things that you can do to, perf you know, to improve your performance experience when uh, developing applications with Spring Boot. Okay, so we're going to build an application that demonstrates that you can be both lazy and fast. Okay, uh, we're going to use an application. We're going to build an application that uses the reactive web support. For example, reactive MongoDB, reactive web, uh, we're going to use Lumbuck, why not, maybe, um, and we're going to use the Spring Boot dev tools. And uh, I think that's it, that's probably enough. We can You can add other things, of course, but I'm just trying to demonstrate some concepts here. So what we're going to do is we have an application, we're going to open the zip file, open it up in our IDE. Uh, it doesn't all that much matter what IDE you use. Um, I'm going to be using uh, IntelliJ, but again, most of this applies to other IDs as well and we're different I'll point out the differences all right so we've got this new project and before we get too far down the way I'm going to set up a property here in our public static void main application that's new in Spring Boot 2.2 uh, so system dot set property uh, spring dot main dot lazy initialization and I'm going to set this to be false okay and that's but it is false by default. But I want to make sure we understand what it's what, what it's doing. I'm going to comment this stuff out, so it's going to get rid of uh, the web flux and the MongoDB reactive stuff. So we have kind of a baseline for what it looks like. Uh, of course, I need to bring in Spring Boot itself now that those are now that now now that it's no longer a transitive dependency. So I'll bring in Spring Boot Starter, and with that, I'll have everything I want. Now I'm going to also add one thing here. I'm going to add environment dash no verify. Okay, this is a setting that uh, I think is a sort of a bygone thing from the era of applets, which makes no sense in the modern sort of server-side, uh, continuously integrated, continuously built, continuously packaged, continuously delivered uh, microservices world of the server-side Java landscape. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and start this. First time, compiling. All right, so it's 0.573 seconds. I'm going to restart it a few times just to get a sort of running sense of what the numbers are. 0 0.507, 0 0.513, 0 0.512, 0 0.508, etc. So half a second, right? A little bit less than, a little bit more than uh, half a second, okay? Um, now, br bring in the dependencies here, our uh, web server and our data, data access tier, just to be fair. And um, let's start that. All right, so 1.269. Restart again. 1 1.225. 1 1.26. Oh, already in use. What is that? Okay, 1.269, 1.247, so 1.25-ish, is that fair? I think that's, you know, it's less than 1.3, certainly. Now, let's try true, okay? So spring main lazy initialization is true, and see what that gives us, 0 0.868, 0 0.878. 0.879 okay 0.907 so you can see it's between 0.8 and 0.9 I think is pretty fair to say you, you can expect that now um, I like the lazy initialization what that's doing is it's lazily initializing beans as it's as though you had added at lazy to your beans and in particular since we have a lot of uh, auto configuration that gets created uh, that you may not use or may not be involved those things get the initialization of those things get deferred until when you actually need them um, are there some things you should know about? Yes, if you have a bean that has a constructor and you're expecting as a side effect of that constructor to have some effect visible in your application at startup time, well, that doesn't happen anymore, right? Those beans that have constructor logic, 
that constructor doesn't get called until the bean is being used. It doesn't get called at first, right? You have to actually invoke it. Now, if you have an application listener uh, or an event listener or whatever for um, uh, for for an event, for example, application uh, started event or uh, you know or application ready event rather or uh, something like that, then um, yeah, that that will be called. But simple construction, all that stuff gets deferred until when you first use uh, the object. Now, I don't think most people are going to have that problem. If you're using a command line runner, an application runner, those will be invoked at the right time. But otherwise, it's deferred to, to first use. Um, now, my next favorite feature is something called DevTools. So let's, before I do this, I'm going to restart the application using debug mode. So I'm restarting, okay? I'm stopping the application and restarting. De remember, de debug mode is slightly slower than um, running in your ID usually, okay? But now that it's running in debug mode, I'm going to do router function server response routes. I'm just going to create a simple endpoint here just to demonstrate the idea. Request predicates dot get high. Okay. Request okay dot body or sync body. Hello world. All right. So I'm just building a simple functional reactive endpoint here. You've seen me do this a million and a half times and voila okay now I'm gonna instead of restarting the application which is the natural instinct normally if you want to start it you hit control R if you do if you're on the Mac there's a button on the top of your smart keyboard or smart bar or whatever that you can press but I'm not gonna run it instead I'm gonna just build it I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna just compile it now this is a little bit of an awkward thing to do if you're if you're used to just running it inside of your ID but here I'm just gonna build it which is the uh, there's a hammer icon on the top of my IDE, and you can see it says point uh, here, point two three seconds. Okay, so now localhost hi, and there's my my endpoint. Okay, so now let's say I want to change this to have more exclamation marks. Now with extra exclamation marks, all for the low low, co low low price of just one exclamation mark. So now I'm going to clear my console. Here we go, clear it all, and I'm going to recompile, but not rerun. Or I think I did rerun it actually. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Darn it. Let me try that again. We're gonna add uh, Hodor, right? This is the uh, Game of Thrones version of Hello World. And now I'm not gonna restart it. I'm just gonna recompile. But let me before I do this. Okay, so clear all, and then recompile. There we go. So you can see the change was visible there in 0.393 seconds. Let me move it down to one exclamation mark like this. I'm going to recompile. And then you can see that that is now visible already in 0.239 seconds. So I go back to the browser, refresh. There it is. So with, with these features, it's super trivial to like to, to, to you know greatly increase the startup time uh, for your application to make development all that much more fun. Uh, and there's other things you can do, like for example, I find that uh, uh, no verify helps. Uh, this is actually a, a, you know, might be as much as 0.1 seconds, right? Uh, it's a, every little bit helps, I guess. Um, all right. So I uh, just wanted to demonstrate some of these features. I hope you enjoyed them. And as usual, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.